So this video is about other expressions for acceleration. So you already know an expression for acceleration. You know that acceleration is equal to uh, the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So that's one good one, but there are some other ones as well that you're going to find really useful. Uh, one of them is the acceleration is equal to the velocity times the derivative of velocity with respect to position. And another one, it feels a little bit complicated. It, acceleration is equal to the derivative of half of velocity squared. You might be asking yourself where do these formulas come from. I will get to that in the end, but I want to show you why we would use them first of all. All right, so here's a nice little summary. Um, acceleration is equal to a function of time. So that's the one you're most used to. If you're given acceleration is equal to some function of time and you're told the initial condition, so you're told the velocity at some time, then using that first formula, this formula here, is your best way to go. If you're given acceleration as some function of velocity, in term and your initial conditions are in terms of t and v then using this formula is also a great way to go this is where things start to get a little bit different if you give an acceleration in terms of uh, a function of velocity and your initial conditions the thing you're told is in terms of position and velocity then using this formula is going to be a great way to go and finally if you're given acceleration as a function of position and you're originally told uh, position and velocity, your initial conditions of position and velocity, then you can use this formula here. Okay, it's better if we just do some stuff. So let's look at this first question here. An object travels in a line such that the velocity, um, velocity meters per second is given by v squared equals 4 minus x squared. Find the acceleration at x equals 1. All right, so we need some sort of acceleration function if we're going to find the acceleration at x equals 1. Our initial function is given in terms of v squared. Now, looking at our useful forms, we can see there's one here where if we've got velocity squared, we can find a function for acceleration. So we know that acceleration equals the derivative of half of v squared. Now, what's half of v squared? Well, we know that v squared is equal to uh, 4 minus x squared, which means that half of v squared is equal to half of 4 minus x squared, which is going to be 2 minus half x squared. So we know what half v squared is. If we know what half v squared is, we can say that the acceleration is equal to the derivative of half of v squared. 2 minus 1 half x squared. Now the derivative of that is um, the 2 is going to disappear and 2 times negative a half is negative 1 negative x. All right, we have a function for acceleration in terms of position. Acceleration equals negative x. Now it says find the acceleration at position 1. So this is really simple now. Sub x equals 1 into our equation, and we can say that the acceleration is equal to negative 1. All right, so that's the end of this question now, although we put some units on here, don't we? Um, useful. All right, so here's a second example. Let's take a look at it. An object moves in a line, so the acceleration, this is x with two dots above it, that's how we show acceleration, is given by acceleration equals 1 plus v. Its velocity at the origin is 1 meter per second. Find the position of the object when its velocity is 2 meters per second. All right, lots to unpack there. Let's look at our little table here and look at this. We're given a function of acceleration in terms of velocity. All right, so in our little picture here, Acceleration in terms of velocity, acceleration in terms of velocity. So these are our given functions here. The initial conditions, what are we told? Its velocity at the origin is one meter per second. Its velocity at the origin. So the origin is a measure of displacement, not a measure of time. 
So we're given displacement, displacement zero, and we're given velocity one meter per second. So we're given displacement and velocity. So that means that this equation is going to be very useful to us in this situation. So this is the initial acceleration equation we were given. Our goal here is to find the position of the object when its velocity is 2 meters per second. So we really need an equation that links position to velocity. This is what we're going to be able to do here because if this is acceleration, we can now write it not as acceleration equals 1 plus b, v, but v dv dx equals 1 plus v. v dv dx equals 1 plus v. Now this is great news for us because remember I said we need an equation that links position and velocity. And that's what we have here. We have a differential equation that's linking velocity and displacement. Alright, so why don't we get dv dx by itself. 1 plus v over v. And now we're just solving differential equations. Right, so all this work in blue is stuff that you've done before. You know how to solve differential equations. Um, this c value here, we're going to have to find that c value. And luckily we're given an initial velocity and an initial origin. With displacement is 0 and velocity is 1. So we can sub that in and solve for c. So now that we've subbed in that, we can find a c value of ln2 minus 1 and sub that c value in and then use some log laws to get this nice little thing here. What we have now is an equation in terms of x and v. We can finally just sub in some values because we were trying to find the position of the object when its velocity is 2 meters per second. So sub v equals 2 into this equation and we'll know the position. So subbing v equals 2 we'll get an answer of 0.59 and then just a bit of context when velocity is 2 meters per second, position is 0.59. Another question here, you might want to pause it and read the question. I'm just going to jump straight into it. Um, its acceleration is described by this function here. All right, so we're given an acceleration function in terms of position. Acceleration in terms of position. So it probably means that this is going to be useful for us. Let's look at what initial conditions we're being given here. Uh, find a relation between v and x, which describes the motion given the velocity equals 2 when the particle is at the origin. So I'm being told a velocity and an initial position. Velocity and an initial position. So we can, get, we can bet that this form is going to be useful to us here. And we're trying to come up with a relation between v and x. And again, if we know acceleration, this side here is a relationship between v and x. So we can be sure that this bottom form is the one that we want to be using here. Here's that bottom form written. Acceleration equals the derivative of half v squared. Now we know that the acceleration is equal to negative root x, which means that we know that negative root x is equal to this here. All right, so we've got this here. What can we do with this? Well, if we integrate both sides, if we integrate this side and we integrate this side with respect to x, that derivative is going to disappear. And I should be writing a little dx there as well. And this bit here is going to be just some equation for x. And what it leaves us with is negative 2 thirds x to the 3 on 2 plus c equals half v squared. All right, now we probably need to figure out what that c is. Uh, let's look for an initial condition. Um, given that v equals 2 meters per second when the particle is at the origin. So x equals 0 when v equals 2. Let's sub that in there and figure out what c is. So relatively straightforward here. That just cancels out and we get c equals 2. We now have an equation. So that's a pretty decent equation. I think that satisfies our answer. That half hanging out there is a little bit strange. So I guess we could write it as v squared uh, negative 4 on 3 x to the 3 on 2 plus 4. You might also see it in a factorized version, but that's enough for that. 